are going to show you how Calvinism is actually refuted in the ministry of Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ himself proves the doctrine of free will, the biblical doctrine of what's called libertarian free will, which is a bit of a redundant term, by the way, too. It's like it's no different than saying, well, uh, free food that costs no money or, um, you know, a free or, or I'll do this favor for you for free and you don't have to pay me anything. It's like the redundant type term. But uh, libertarian free will, as just so people know what I'm talking about is actually taught by Jesus Christ. He, the, there's examples in the ministry of Jesus Christ that demonstrate the power of contrary choice and free will to accept or reject, you know, against the Calvinistic doctrine of just complete sovereignty of God. And by the way, the word sovereignty appears nowhere in scripture, but that's a side issue. Uh, so I'm gonna get into the scriptures. First of all, Jesus Christ actually marveled at the unbelief of the people of his own country, which shows that they could have believed. Mark chapter six, verse four to six. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hand upon a few sick folk, and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. He's marveling because of their unbelief. It's interesting there. Jesus Christ upbraided the eleven with their unbelief and hardness of heart, as if they were supposed to believe and have the opposite you know, opinion on the issue. Okay, another example of that. Uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 14. Mark chapter 16, verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, uh, unto the eleven and as, as they sat at meat, he abraded them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. So he's abrading them. He's saying he just abraded them with their unbelief, which shows they could have believed harder essentially and proof of that is in the next scripture i'll cover later on but in this other scripture right here matthew chapter 23 verse 37 jesus christ actually laments over Jeru over jerusalem rejecting him he has sorrow over their rejection which shows they could have had the option to accept jesus christ as their messiah but they chose out of their own free will to reject him matthew chapter 23 verse 37 matthew chapter 23 verse 37 O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them that are which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered my, thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chicken, gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. He's saying, you know, I wish I could do this, but you you wouldn't accept it. Why? Because the power of contrary choice. Okay, and for the proof of this, like I said earlier, Jesus Christ rebukes his apostles over being slow to believe, as if they could have believed faster. Luke chapter twenty four, verse twenty five. Luke chapter 24, verse 25. Then he, said, then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And he goes on to explain his crucifixion, how it fulfills the prophecies in the Old Testament. Why? Because the apostles, they could have believed faster, but they obviously chose not to. That's simple. Because the power of contrary choice, the power of, of acting against the will of God. Now, obviously, you shouldn't do that, but it just goes to show that, you know, this idea of how the Calvinists, they pervert the idea of the sovereignty of God and make it seem like you're just some kind of robot. Like, you, like when you really get down to it, and some Calvinists may deny that, but when you really get down to it, they deny the free will and the power of contrary choice, especially in the context of salvation. That simple. And especially when you get into the whole hyper-Calvinistic section, too, where they're just full-on, just, you're like a robot for God. It's, uh, it's false doctrine. It's that simple. So I want to point that out, and, and Calvinism is essentially, I believe, is the devil's attempt to try to, you know, hinder and stop the spreading of the gospel, because you get some of these hyper-Calvinists who don't even go out and preach the gospel. They just say, well, well God will just choose who gets saved and who gets lost. Yeah, it's a false doctrine, and it needs to be exposed, and we'll, I'll be coming out with more stuff exposing it in the future. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.